iPhone 13 is loaded with new technology. Since the new iPhone still doesn't have a cup holder, I'm not going to buy it anytime soon. But Apple sure does know how to list features in a great way. I'm going to steal this design and show you how to recreate the Apple style grid inside of Webflow. Now you can either build along with me or I've set up a clonable so you can easily add the project to your account and start from there. So let's jump on into making our own. So I've started off the project with a section that I've made the full height of the viewport height and then I've added a container inside of that section and also made that 100% height. And now we're going to add in a grid for our Apple grid and we're going to make this grid 100% of the height and we're going to add a bunch more columns to it as well. So we'll add in maybe six across and let's say four up and that's going to be uh, that's going to make it easy for us to put different size squares uh, across all of the grid to make a different layout and to put in some variability of the sizes i'm going to make these first two columns a little bit larger and so when we actually put the content in we're going to put the main content in the uh, middle middle kind of uh, squares and then all of the other content around the outside squares and we'll just call this Apple grid and with that done we'll drop in a div and we'll just call this the Apple grid block and we'll give it a background color so it's a bit more visible and also give it a radius and we're going to copy this out a bunch of times for different sections maybe about that much we can add in some more later and now we're going to resize these blocks to make them slightly different shapes so we'll make this one a little bit bigger and this can be a nice large one in the center. And we can adjust these however we want um, to fit the kind of style that we're going for or the layout that we're going for. That make that one a bit bigger. I'll add a couple more. Make that one bigger as well. And now we'll drop some text into the divs and we can add any kind of content that we want. We can add text or images or, or anything else. Uh, but we'll just start with text to give ourselves uh, something to start with. And so we want to make the uh, the color of the text white and then we also want to bring the text to the center of the div and make that center aligned but also we don't want it to rub up against the edges so we're also going to add some padding and we'll just call this an apple text block so let me go ahead and add this text block to a couple of the different blocks uh, across the grid now that I've done the text, I'm going to add in the imagery and there's two kind of images that I'm going to add in either an image cover to fully cover the div or just an image in the center of the div. So let's start with the image covers. So I'm going to drop in an image into my section, give it a class of image cover and it's going to be 100% of the width, 100% of the height and it's going to cover. And since it's not going edge to edge, we're going to change the position to be absolute and we'll make sure that div underneath is set to relative instead of static. And we'll just turn the overflow to none just to make sure that it's clipping those edges as it should be. And now we'll add this image cover to a couple of the other sections. Now for a couple of the text sections, I actually want their text to appear at the top of the div rather than at the center or maybe at the bottom. So I'm going to add a couple of combo classes. This one's going to be top align and we'll make it uh, positioning absolute and then change the top to be 20. And I'm also going to do one for bottom align. We'll call that bottom align and do the same thing. We'll give it position of absolute and give that 20 from the bottom. Let me add this to a couple more pieces of the text. And now we're going to add in a couple more images, but rather than being an image cover, they're just going to sit uh, in the center of the div. You'll see that now I've added all this content in because of the, some of the different uh, image sizes, it's made the grid a little bit wonky. And so we're going to fix that. We're going to edit our grid. We're going to change these auto it's usually um, auto but we're going to change it to fr so let's go through and change these to uh, fr and uh, fr is shorthand for frog and now that's looking a little bit more even and i'm going to add background colors to a couple of these divs i'll just give it a new class we'll call that green background 
and we'll change the color to green for that class. Now we'll add it throughout. Now in terms of the grid itself, that's looking pretty much good to go. So there's two things that we want to do left, which is to uh, do a kind of intro animation for when it loads in, and then also scale it across the different screen sizes. So let's do that now. And we'll start with a fade in effect. We'll go into our interactions, and we'll just say that when it scrolled into view, it's going to shrink, which is gonna look like that. We'll give it a little bit of a delay, and then we'll close that one. And now with that shrinking in, we're gonna make all of these outside ones kind of slide in uh, with this into this middle one. So we'll just go around and add in uh, slide in interactions kind of in the different directions that it's coming from. So we'll go scroll into view. It's gonna be a slide. It's gonna come in from the right and uh, we'll give it a little bit of a delay that's further on uh, than the delay that we gave everything. And so fade comes in first and then the slide comes in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of the rest of the outside sections. And now that I've gone through and added it to all of the outside sections with different delays, when I preview it, it's gonna come in with all of those outside sections cascading in just after it fades in. Now for the shock and horror, which is that this doesn't actually adjust between the different screen sizes. And now there's a couple of ways that we can fix that. Uh, and the easiest way is just to remove certain sections so that on smaller devices, the grid isn't as complex. And now we can do exactly that. We can move down to tablet and maybe remove some sections that we don't need. And we're just gonna add a class called tablet hidden, which means that it's gonna be hidden on tablet. And then we can hide that one. And we can go through and do this to a couple of the different images. Call this tablet hidden and it's gonna be hidden since we've already set that class up. We'll do it to this guy. And now we have a bit more flexibility and we can rearrange these sections to, to refit the grid. Move this one all the way across. And maybe we'll just get rid of this one as well. And also this guy. We'll move that one across a bit. Now we can apply the same logic to mobile landscape and mobile portrait and remove certain sections as we go down so that it fits in accordingly. And so now it's scaling across all of the devices. And so if I change my viewport to be flexible, I can see that it's scaling as we go down. And there we have it. That's how we can create an Apple style grid inside of Webflow. Let me know if you found this helpful or interesting, or if you have any future video recommendations, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next video.